Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this effect. So, statue to wine. I basically posted this in my YouTube channel. So, you guys seem to have liked it. So, let's take a look at the effect. So, uh, I'm going to go into Premiere Pro and here it is. So, just like that. And it cuts to the next shot so basically this is the effect so we have this horse statue and uh, it is turning into like wine seemingly uh, somebody suggested that I should make this wine sort of darker which I should but I think it looks pretty fine so it's actually pretty simple to set up so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it but first off if you want to get the project files for this you can go into my patreon and the project files are available there and you can get them uh, which will include some textures and the scene files and if you want to support me you can go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel also you know join my patreon page so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go and create an object like a teapot the good old teapot and here it is i'm actually going to give it some segments so probably like what 16 and i'm actually using a map as the opacity and as the emission texture for Phoenix FD right so the map that we're using is actually here so here is the opacity map I've created this in After Effects with a fractal noise uh, you know I will include them in the project files which you can get in my patreon and also I'll show you guys how to make them inside of After Effects just in case you wanna do it yourself so it's pretty simple so I'm actually go and open up After Effects so here I am inside of After Effects and I'm going to go and create a new composition. So I'll make it HD but you can make it any size you want so I'm going to hit OK. So I'll create a new solid first and hit uh, this is going to be our background. So you want the opacity to start off with white because that's like 100% opacity and you want to move on to like black. So what I'm going to do is select this, go to Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe and change this to 180 degrees and now you see that if you move this you will see that it's moving up and down so I'm actually gonna keyframe it from 0 to like what 8 seconds I'm gonna go all the way to 100 so now you see that it's moving down and I'm going to increase the feather to like what 120 and just like that now we want to create that sort of fractal noise texture to give it more of a sort of procedural and you know organic look so I'm gonna go and create a new solid hit OK and turn this off I'm gonna mask off this portion of this alright so just this much you wanna make sure that your sides are actually far enough so that when we feather it there won't be any problems and then I'm actually gonna turn this back on I'll go up here and double click on this double click move it up here and hit M and keyframe the mask pad hit U on this layer and go ahead to the 8 frame mark 8 second mark double click on this and move it down and since we've keyframed the mask path now that will actually move with the layer and if I hit F on this I will be giving it some feather and now it's time to apply the fractal noise effect so I'm actually gonna go effect uh, noise and grain, fractal noise, and let's tweak the settings a little bit. So I'm actually going to give it some contrast and some brightness, lower the brightness, and you can go and scale it up or down. Increase the rotation and set this to none so that we'll have better sharp edges, and also increase the complexity to give it more detail to play with. All right, so this is it, the effect. So it's actually moving with our layer and making it a bit more sort of organic and yeah so I'll set this to none give it more feather just like that I think it's fine and you want to make sure that they're not you know sticking out at the beginning and at the ends of the layer so you want to you want to select this turn on your mask and just move it up and also at the end you don't want anything to be left out so just like that and if you don't know After Effects or you don't want to do this part, you can skip it and get the project files in my Patreon page. And also we'll, we'll be needing another map 
for the Phoenix FD, which is pretty simple. So I'm actually going to just uh, go into After Effects, create a new composition, and just select Create New Solid, and just, just like before, mask it, give it some feather, just like that, and make sure the sides are wide enough. And just hit M and keyframe the mask path to move it from top to bottom. Again, you want to make sure that they sync perfectly. If this map is like 8 seconds long, then this one should also be like 8 seconds long because they want you want them to be syncing perfectly. And you just move it down here. And you want to make sure that you don't have any white parts sticking out from the beginning and the end of the layer. Okay? So yeah. And then you'll just export these, add to render queue as JPEG sequences. And we will be, you know, export, select a location, render them out, and we will be using them inside Phoenix FD. All right, so uh, this was the After Effects part. Again, if you don't want to do this or you, you don't know, you know, After Effects or anything, you can just get the image sequences on my Patreon page along with the project files of this tutorial. All right, so now moving on to 3D Studio Max. Uh, I'm actually going to show you guys the opacity map, how to use it. So I'm actually going to hit M here and it will load my material editor and I'll go and add a V-Ray material. And for now, I'm actually going to go into the diffuse map, click here and add a bitmap. And I'm actually going to go into that same folder. So I have the maps folder and here is my opacity map. So I'm actually going to click on the first image and set it to sequence, hit open, OK. And now we'll be having that, so I'm actually going to apply this to that layer. So apply it here, show map in the viewport. And now you'll see that it is actually moving, but we need to increase our timeline. So I'm actually going to click here and set it to like, what, 600 frames? OK just like that. So it's moving but it's it's not UV'd perfectly. So you need to go into the UVW map, the modifiers list, uh, click here, hit U and you'll get the UVW map and set it to cylindrical and make sure it is an even cylinder. So I'm actually going to drop this down and select the gizmo and just scale it like this. And make sure to scale it up this much. All right, so now you see that the map is actually going correctly uh, across like 600 frames or whatever. So hold down Control and Alt and right click and drag and you'll increase your time. So whenever it finishes, just like that. And we want to add this. Uh, the diffuse was just for PV purposes. So I'm actually going to add it also to the, uh, where is the opacity, opacity as well. So now, if I add a light here, and go ahead and set this to like, what, 7. And I'm actually going to create a background for this so you can see it a little better. So now if I render this out, you will see that these parts are going to be transparent. So I'm actually going to click on Render. So you'll see that half of the teapot is gone due to that opacity map. So that's what we're using to like sort of make the model disappear. And then we're going to be using the next uh, map as a Phoenix FD source. And yeah, that'll be it. So that part I'm actually going to show you guys uh, in the main scene. So now onto the main scene here. So I have my Phoenix FD grid here and I have my Phoenix FD liquid source. So when you, whenever you create your liquid source, you're going to go and add your statue object. And output velocity is set to 12 surface force. And I'm actually going to hit M. And I've loaded the second sequence, which is this one, the Phoenix FD map. I've loaded it as a, you know, image sequence right here, which is the map 3. So map 3 is right here. So, and I've just like dropped it onto this as an instance and hit OK. So that will, uh, that will use, you know, this map as an emission texture for Phoenix FD liquid. So based on that, Phoenix FD will sort of emit liquid, which would look like this. All right. 
and since they are sort of perfectly synced, it'll look like you know it's disappearing based on the liquid, which in fact is not. All right. So um, yeah. And then the next thing I did is I turned on motion velocity and set it to one. And let's go into our grid. I'm actually going to go through uh, the settings that I use. So I'm actually going to scale this here. So I'll go down here into the grid. Uh, I use like 64 million cells, uh, which is still not a lot, but yeah, it's quite fine. You can go higher. And for the Z, I should have set it to jam minus. That, that's what I was saying, because the liquid should not sort of escape and slide across the floor. It should sort of collect here. But, uh, you know, that's what I did. But you can, you can change it definitely, all right? And the other thing is that, uh, you know, going into dynamics, uh, I used like four steps per frame. 0 0.35 time scale because the actual liquid was very fast moving so I had to slow it down and then I gave it like a bit of surface uh, tension strength uh, just like that and mainly that is it and yeah so set an output path and you know yeah once your uh, you know simulation is finished you just go ahead and create the wine material which is actually right here I think so it's actually like a, you know, we're going to make it black and give it some reflection and full refraction and a bit of a fog color to be able to create that sort of, uh, you know, wine sort of liquid. All right, so that's uh, what the fog color is doing. And that is basically it. So uh, let me see if I miss anything else. I haven't. So you, you, you do want to go and set up uh, a very simple example first. So you want to learn the effect and, you know, play around with it. And then you can go ahead and change your object. Make sure the UVs are actually, you know, s sitting properly. And once you're done simulating, you can just go ahead and put on your, you know, original stone texture or whatever it is. All right. And then I brought it into After Effects, added some motion blur, some color correction, and that's basically it. All right, so this is uh, pretty much it, and let me know if you if I've missed anything or if you have missed anything. So you can tell me in the comment section for this tutorial, and also if you want to get the project files for this again, you can go and download it in my Patreon page. All right. So this was the today's tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. Until the next one, enjoy working.